Hey, in this video, I will introduce you to the regulation on deforestation free products in the EU. And we look into the scope, prohibitions, due diligence, and documentation. When it comes to this regulation, also, uh, also called the EU DR, what really matters is, is understanding if the type of, say, commodity or product that you're selling is, is within the scope. And second, how you practically need to carry out due diligence. Let's begin with the scope then. So what this regulation does is that it aims to minimize the union's contribution to deforestation and forest degra degradation worldwide. This means that you need information about the source. And what you can also see here is a list, uh, a summary of the different commodities or products made that are somehow derived from these commodities. We have cattle, coffee, oil palm, rubber, soy, and wood. Keep in mind, it's not just about commodities, it's also about finished goods. And, and that's why the EU DR has an impact on so many businesses that are selling in the EU. The way you can navigate this, this, this regulation is that you go to Annex 1. So in Annex 1, they provide a more detailed list of the different types of products and, well, articles, I think is the term they use, that are derived from these these categories let me show you what that can mean in in practice right so when it comes to cattle well they do mention they do mention meat and so on but they also cover hides and and, and skins which could be relevant if you're manufacturing say leather goods you may be uh, at some point affected by the EU DR. I think that's what some, some something that many many uh, businesses misunderstand that they're not involved directly in the um, production or refining or importation of the commodity itself or the raw material, but EU DR is relevant nonetheless. And as you as said, you can find this under Annex One. Let's move on and look into rubber. So here we can, we can see a variety of different types of rubber products. They do specifically mention articles of apparel and clothing accessories, including gloves, mittens, mitts for all purposes of vulcanized rubber, other than hard rubber. As you can see, there's a lot of consumer goods that could be affected in the future by the EU DR. Right, and this one is perhaps also a bit vague, 40, 40, 16, other articles of vulcanized uh, rubber, not mentioned elsewhere. Then we have wood, not gonna go into extreme detail here, but you can see it's a lot of, a lot of materials used in, in construction, in, in, in uh, in buildings and so on. But then there's also consumer goods like tableware and kitchenware made of wood. Printed books, newspapers and so on. So it's, it's fairly comprehensive when it comes to the products that are affected one way or the other by the EU DR. Right, look at prohibitions. What Article 3 states is that relevant commodities and relevant products shall not be placed or made available in the EU unless the, the, these three conditions are fulfilled. And that is that these are deforestation free, that these the products or, or the, well, the materials, the raw materials uh, from which these products are derived should not originate from, um, um, let's say, parts of the Amazon where there's illegal logging and, 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 and things like that. That's not entirely new, but uh, the EU DR, it goes beyond the EU TR. 
and it it is not just about timber anymore it's it's also it's also about these other materials they also state that uh, the product must have been produced in accordance with the relevant legislation of the country of production so you can see that this is really taking international uh, supply chains into consideration and yeah it can feel overwhelming to 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 um to get a grasp on that you're based somewhere in in europe and you're manufacturing a product say in china and that supply is in turn sourcing i don't know rubber or wood from malaysia or indonesia or elsewhere how do you how do you keep track of all this and that's really the challenge because this is really about collecting evidence about documenting your supply chain and and finally you need a, a due diligence statement Let's look into the due diligence procedure. This, this is uh, really the core part of the EUDR. What they do state is that due diligence should include the collection of information, data, and documents set out in Article 9. Let's look into that in a bit. A risk assessment, well, risk assessment measures must be implemented. That's Article 10. Risk mitigation measures, that's Article 11. And there's also something called simplified due, dil due diligence. Let's look into Article 9 because that one gives you a pretty clear idea of what they are expecting. Because as I said, it's EUDR is, is very much about documentation gathering. And, and as you can see here, this is this is more practical. This is something to go on. So you can see here you need to provide descriptions, trade names of the products common name of the species you need to provide order information the quantity entering and leaving the market country or production you may need proof well that could be maybe now it's not spelled out here but it could perhaps be a country of origin certificate the geolocation of all plots of land where the relevant commodities have been well, where they originate from, I imagine. And then company information, your business, the supplier. So yeah, you need a very, very well documented uh, supply chain. Now, I also want to make clear that there are certain exemptions when it comes to what they define as SMEs or small to medium sized enterprises. And it's, it's also a definition for micro enterprises or micro businesses i can't remember which term they're using which let's say uh, eases the, the the due diligence process you need to implement because i think they do understand that if you're a, uh, a one-man business selling on amazon that there are limitations to, uh, to what you can do when it comes to documenting a global supply chain that is not exactly uh, transparent uh, to put it mildly but I'm not going to go into detail because um, there are many, many conditions to take into consideration. But you can find all this information. This is, of course, public information. You find it on the EU website. But yeah, just so you know. Um, I also want to state that my intention with this video is not to cover every single article or condition, but to give you a, uh, let's say, an introduction to uh, better understand the big picture. I think that's all I can do in a 10, 12 minute video. All right, let's look at the documentation. Documentation ties back to, I mean, due diligence is at the very core documentation, at least for the most part. And at least from your perspective, it's, it's primarily about gathering documentation, but practically it comes down to the due diligence statement in Annex 2, we'll look into that in a bit, and the documentation in uh, Article 8 and 12. And I also want to state that Article 8 and 12 is in turn referencing what I just showed you. I think that was Article 9 with a list of documentation and there's the mitigation and the risk assessment and so on. That go makes it a bit more clear what you actually need in, in, in terms of the paperwork that you need to prepare. But anyway, let's look at Annex 2. So under the EU, the artist, there's a template uh, on Annex 2 for a due diligence statement. And it's it's a bit similar to a declaration of conformity, if you are familiar with, with that concept. In any case, this is this is now part of the procedure. 
you can find this under Annex 2. And they require uh, operator's name, harmonized system code, well, as the HS code for the commodity or the product, country production, and so on. Let's look at Article 8. So, Article 8 is, is also in turn um, referencing the documentation. It, it's sort of summarizing the different different parts where you can find more information. One of these is Article 9 that I showed you. I know it's a lot of articles. I know it can be confusing, but this is a, it's a sprawling text, and that's simply the way it's structured. Um, that's, that's, that's just the way it is. But anyway, Article 9, 10, and 11, as we can find... Uh, more information about the actual items that you need uh, as part of your due diligence file, if I can use that term. Okay, so um, I hope you, I hope that at the very least help you understand the basics of EUDR. As I said, I didn't intend to cover everything and I didn't cover everything in the EUDR, but I hope this video serves as at least an introduction. If you have questions, you can write your questions in the comment section on compliancegate.com or you can write a question on YouTube.